Evelyn to Phil, June 11th, 1941, 6.30 p.m. Phil, dear, it's always a pleasure to receive mail from you, more so on Wednesday evening, as it means the week is drawing to a close and you will soon be home with us. As you know, I have been on the go for the past two evenings, what with going to Lil's and taking in a movie, which left me very little time to write to you, sweet. Somehow I managed to inform you of my whereabouts, knowing you would be disappointed if I failed to write. Tonight, however, I intend to write a nice long letter, summarizing my adventure and thoughts since our temporary parting on Sunday night. Ready? Here I go. Page 2. Everything happened so quickly Sunday evening that I didn't have a chance to feel anything until the train taking you away from me was out of sight. I felt heartsick, so much so that I found myself crying on the way home in the car. I wanted, more, I wanted you more than you'll ever know. Sigh. Having related what occurred in my previous letters, I'll continue with Lil. I don't know whether to write about her at all. No sooner do I write one thing when, bang, she suddenly reverses her decision. I called her from the office today to learn that she had again changed her mind about going to camp. She had packed all her belongings, and Jack had put a four, page three, rent sign in the window. Evidently, Eddie has come through, for Lil told me that he wants her more than anything in the world. At the moment, Jack is papering her apartment, and she is unpacking, having decided to keep the apartment. Rather than explain the conglomeration of decisions, indecisions, and what have you, repeatedly, I politely told Lil to write you daily, giving the up-to-the-minute news about Levy versus Zelensky. Tuesday evening, Mom and I decided we would go to the movies if Harry would drive us to 60th Street. The Weinmans and our Harry were going to visit Ethel. I had started writing a letter to you. Page 4. When Mom burst into the kitchen, shouting excitedly, Harry, Harry, the Weinmans are waiting for us. I finished your letter hurriedly and proceeded to apply fresh makeup, whereupon Nikki, Harry Wyman, and Tanta walked in and very angrily retorted, what's the idea of making us wait? Everyone began shouting at everyone else, some fun. I didn't know what the hell they were hot about. It seems uh, as though the Weinmans were perturbed because they had to wait for Mom and me. Finally, we all piled into the car. Our Harry then said, It's too darn late to go to Ethel's, and the Weinmans agreed. It was almost eight. Five seconds later, they started for Ethel's. Page 5. They refused to drop us off at 60th Street. So I got out of the car, told Mom to go with them. She wanted to take a ride anyway, and started for the movies alone. The evening wasn't spoiled by any means, as I enjoyed the picture immensely, even though I disliked going by myself. I got home at 11, feeling knocked out and blue, and went right to bed. Lil's flowers are still fresh. In fact, their fragrance and perfumes can still be detected throughout the apartment. Talk about surprises. A paper hanger came today and papered the bathroom. You should see it now. It really looks like something. Aha. Uh -huh. At any rate, it is now after nine, and I have a few other minor tasks to attend to. Page six, before turning in. Just to show you I'm a sport, I'll take a few more minutes to write, I love you, baby. Regards and love from all, again, including your mouthpiece and ever-loving wife, Ev. P.S. Today is a red-letter day for you. This is my second communication in 24 hours. Philip to Evelyn, Wednesday, June 11th, 7.30. My darling, today was a honey. 
We were on the range as scheduled, but didn't fire a shot all day. You see, they bring the men up to the firing line alphabetically, and since I am near the end in the order, I didn't get to fire. I think, though, that tomorrow I'll complete my tests. Sam didn't shoot either, so we loafed around and chinned most of the day. We even got in an hour's sleep in the late afternoon. You'd marvel at the way we snoozed through the racket of what sounded like a major engagement on the hard, hard ground with our packs for pillows. Still, it's small wonder, because they get us up at 4.30 now. After mess, I got my laundry, showered, shaved, and dressed, which brings us up to the present moment. The barracks resembles a girl's dormitory. The fellows, most of them, are going to the company dance, and they're excited and all a flutter, primping and posing for one another. The girls are coming in from Baltimore, and it promises to be a pretty nice affair. I hope the boys have a good time. They certainly deserve it. About Morty Greitzer, keep me informed. I'm hoping he'll be sent here. Sam and I are going out for a walk now before we turn in. So I'll say good night, my sweet, until tomorrow. My love to the family. Lovingly, Phil.